Maybe we should begin by talking about mysticism. Julian Minorich was a mystic. Well, what is a mystic? Well, before I attempt to answer that question, let me give you a quotation from a German theologian named Karl Rahner, who died about 33, 34 years ago, early 1980s. Karl Rahner was one of the big movers and shakers of the Vatican II Council, the, the really significant council in the life of the Catholic Church in the 20th century. Very, very important figure. And he writes an essay in 1965 called The Future of the Church. And if, you, if you're ever at a theology library, look it up, because it's almost uncanny how he's describing what the church of today looks like 50 years later. But in another essay that was written a few years later, he also on this topic of, of the church of the future or the Christianity of the future, he makes a statement and it's almost, he, it's almost like an offhanded statement that he makes, but it has become one of his most widely quoted little sound bites. And what he says is that the Christian of the future will be a mystic or will not exist. The Christian of the future will be a mystic or will not exist. And what I would like to suggest to you, again, he, he says that, what, 40 years ago, that the future is here. And any of you who've been following the news know that there was recently a um, Pew Research poll, I guess, that was done that showed that religious adherence in the United States is rapidly dwindling, particularly among Christians of all stripes, Catholic, Protestant, Evangelical, snake handler, whatever kind of a Christian you might be, you're supposed to laugh at the snake handler. <laughs> but um, but the, um, I think when you, when you add all Christians together, in 1985, 85% of Americans self-identified as Christian, 85%. Now it's 70%. So that's a drop of almost 20% in 30 years, in one generation. Meanwhile, those who identify themselves as spiritual but not religious, or as agnostic, atheist, None of the above. In fact, they call them the nuns now, not N-U-N-S, like, you know, Sister Maria of Perpetual Responsibility, but N-O-N-E-S, as in, I'm not going to darken the door of a church, thank you very much. So the nuns, the SBNRs, the atheists, the agnostics, have gone in 30 years from 8% to 16%. They've doubled. Minority religions, whether Muslim or Buddhist, Hindu, uh, those kinds of Wicca, they've all grown as well. So the religious landscape here in North America is changing and it's changing rapidly. If those trends were to continue, and I, was, I mean we can argue about what the next 85 years will look like, but if those trends were to continue, Christianity as an institutional religion could be a minority religion within a hundred years. Now, I'm not here to prognosticate about that, but just to point out that I think Karl Rahner's comment is right on the money. The Christian of the future will be a mystic or will not exist. We already see that Christianity is diminishing. So that, that's kind of the warning of what Rahner was saying. But what's the positive? What if we took his statement and turned it inside out? What if what Karl Rahner was really saying is that what God is inviting Christianity into is mysticism. And mysticism is a terrible word. So I want to I wanna maybe kind of unpack that a little. What is a mystic? And to answer that question, I want to start with another wonderful quotation from a Carmelite priest named William McNamara. And he says, the mystic is not a special kind of person. Each person is a special kind of mystic. Let me repeat that, it's so important. The mystic is not a special kind of person. Each person is a special kind of mystic. So the first thing I want to say is that if, if God is calling us to be mystics, 
That doesn't mean that we all have to suddenly be like Julian of Norwich and get deathly ill and have visions. Maybe some of us will. It doesn't necessarily mean we all have to be like Meister Eckhart, the great German Dominican mystic, and write these learned treaties, treatises of theology, although maybe some of us will. It doesn't necessarily mean we have to be great poets like John of the Cross, who's considered one of the great poets of the Spanish language, not just among religious people, but in general. But maybe some of us will. What I would like to suggest is that the first thing we can say about being a mystic is that we have to be authentically ourselves. That the first step that God is calling us into is not to conform to some sort of external norm, but to actually go within and to learn who we have truly been created to be and to listen to our hearts and to the whispers of our soul. And that that's where we will find the path that we are called to be. But you're still saying, okay, that's fine. So, you know, self-knowledge, that's a good thing. You know, till I know self be true. You know, Socrates, he was all about that. But still, what is a mystic? Okay. Well, let's go back to the language. It comes from a Greek word. It's the same word that we get mystery from. So there's an element of mystery about mysticism. All the engineers in the audience are now nervous. But, but it's, um, the word, it's mueo, M-U-E-O, the Greek word basically means to shut or to close. And it has an embodied quality. It's like shutting your eyes or closing your mouth. Shutting your eyes or closing your mouth. So the mystic is the one who goes into a place where their eyes are closed. Think about Jesus saying, go into your room, your secret room, your inner room, and close the door and pray in secret. That's the essential mystical act. That act of tending to our interiority, tending to our soul, listening to those whispers within us. So that's the first piece. But then that second piece, that zipping of the mouth, I see, the, I see two dimensions of this. The first is that there is an essential quality of silence to mystical theology or to mystical spirituality. That you can't have mysticism without silence. That is the sine qua non, that's the, 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 the foundation. But it also means, and I'll throw out a big word at you, that there's a basic ineffable quality to the mystery. In other words, you can't put it into words. It, it transcends our philosophy, our language, our theology. And that's not to say that there isn't a place for theologizing and philosophizing and all that good stuff. But in the silence, we are called into a place where all of our narratives, all of our conversations, ultimately fall away. And we are in the naked, pure presence of God. So we'll talk a little bit about silence and about contemplation, kind of these, these you know, elements that help us to enter into this mystical place that I believe the Holy Spirit is calling the church, the whole church, into. This place of silence, of authenticity, of deep listening, of embracing the mystery, of being willing to say, I don't have all the answers, being willing to listen, not only to God, but to one another. That these are the elements that I think Karl Rahner is saying to us, this is what you need to be cultivating to be the Christian of the future.